Hey everybody, Ryan Shroud here, back again to talk about the GeForce GTX. Nope. Hey everybody, Ryan Shroud, back here again with PC Perspective to talk about the NVIDIA Titan V graphics card. Last time I was here, we did a quick unboxing and uh, teardown, if you will, to really show you the PCB, show you the GPU. Thought it was pretty cool. Obviously, what you guys really want to know about this $3,000 graphics card is what the performance looks like. Now, we're going to do this in a couple of different parts. Uh, we were able to get all of our gaming testing done first, and uh, we're going to present that to you here, right? So uh, a couple of caveats, right? The, the Titan V is a $3,000 graphics card, and NVIDIA bills it as a graphics card, even though its primary uses are you know, computational, uh, computational based, right? So, you know, uh, machine learning, AI, you know, ray tracing, there are some rendering tasks for there, uh, but it's not really targeted at gamers or even really professional users that would kind of, you know, be in that quadro realm, right? Because the real benefit to this uh, is in double precision compute compared to previous Titan cards and the majority of the quadro cards out there. So, but that being said, it is a new GPU, and I think uh, just as we did with the uh, the Vega Frontier Edition, it's really interesting to look at these professional cards as they are released first to try to estimate or come up with some thoughts about how we think this architecture might scale for gaming when consumer cards are actually released. There is a debate on whether or not Volta will ever actually come out as a consumer card, maybe that uh, rumored Ampere part will be the derivative that comes out for, for gamers next year. I don't really know, um, but assuming that, that some derivative of Volta is released, let's talk about what gaming performance is. So we, we've kind of gone over this in the last video. Quick reminder, this is 5,120 CUDA cores compared to 3,840 in the Titan XP. So significant jump forward in terms of just raw compute capability. You are running at slightly lower clock speeds. On average, we found that uh, in-game sustained use, you're somewhere between 1550 and 1600 megahertz when it comes to your actually sustained clock speeds. You start in like the 1750 range and it kind of, as it heats up, we found that it kind of, within a minute or two, will will steady state down into the, into the 1600 megahertz range or so. 12 gigs of memory, so plenty of capacity there. One gig more than the Titan XP, no issues with that. So let's talk about performance. Obviously when you're looking at a card at this performance level, at this Price. Again, you, if you're a gamer, you should not buy this. Um, we're going to look at 4K as kind of the majority. We tested in a review, if you look at the results, 2560 by 1440 and 4K. Um, and in many cases, what you'll see is that the 25 by 14 results, the performance gain you get is minimal, and at 4K that increases. Obviously, it makes sense uh, when you are talking about a GPU with this much horsepower. The, the CPU and the rest of the platform can become the bottleneck significantly more quickly. Um, Here's, here's the summation of, of how it looks, right? If we compare the Titan V to the Titan XP, the previous, current, whatever you want to call it, best graphics gaming card on the market, we'll find uh, that the, the new card is anywhere from 5 to 25% faster, depending on the game and the resolution, with kind of a healthy average, some kind of common average, being about the 18 to 20% margin, especially if you focus on the 4K. So that's putting um, this at 20% faster than the Titan XP, which seems great, except you gotta remember it is $3,000 versus $1,200 for the Titan XP. From a performance per dollar metric, not a great, uh, a great measurement, but it is there. Now if you look at the 1080 Ti, um, you're looking at anywhere from 15 to as much as 50? percent faster depending on the application and the, and the resolution. You know, some games like Hellblade, uh, even Sniper Elite 4 show some significant performance deltas between the Titan V and the lower performance cards. I'd say on average 25 to 35 percent faster is what the Titan V is there. And then we, we do have uh, the GTX 1080 in there. Obviously it's a very different classification of card. $499 price tag is where the target is. We're seeing this card being as much as 80% faster in some of those games. Again, Hellblade is a good example of that. Um, the Witcher 3 is another good example of that. And then the Vega 64, the liquid-cooled version we use in our benchmarking, AMD's current fastest graphics card that they offer, Frontier Edition, not any faster for gaming. Um, you're looking anywhere from 40 to 90% better for the Titan V with an average about you know 75% or so. Um, the, the Titan V is clearly a fantastic gaming graphics card if you just only look at the performance, right? But if you look at performance per dollar, 
not so great. Now I know our, our friends over at Gamers Nexus, Steve over there did some overclocking. I think he was able to get like 200 extra megahertz out of it. I haven't gotten that far in our testing yet. Um, our power testing was interesting. Um, we were able to show that it has a 250 watt TDP, so within the range of the 1080 Ti and the Titan XP, but it uh, kind of dropped off pretty quickly. When we hit that 83, 84C thermal delta or thermal limit, I guess, um, the, the card started, that's when you started to pull back into that 1550 megahertz range clock speed, which is fine. It's well above the rated base and boost clock, right? The, the rated base clock is 1200. The rated boost clock is 1455. So we're even 100 megahertz over that. But it was only drawing like in the 200 to 210 watt range, which is an interesting uh, discussion that maybe we can have at some point about the architectural differences between Volta and Pascal. You know, one uh, possibility is we have a really, really good GPU that has low leakage, and so it's able to um, get the same performance, the expected performance ratings, out of uh, the GPU without using its full thermal capability, right? Uh, the other option is that maybe the cooler isn't working the best, or the contact with the GPU isn't working the best, and it's throttling more than it should, right? We're going to take it apart again, to replace thermal paste again and kind of see what different results we get after we get finished with our initial compute stuff too. We'll, we'll take a look at all these differences. Um, it's a really good card. If this, would, if this had been a $1,500 GPU, which is crazy to think about, right, um, that those would exist, this would actually be targeted, I think, heavily to those super high-end enthusiast gamers, people who have more money than they know what to do with, people who've invested in Bitcoin for years. You know, that's the class of individual now that we're talking about for this, for this card. Um, I know NVIDIA doesn't want to talk about the Titan V for gaming. That's not, that's not their audience for it, but it's clearly going to be on people's minds. That's why we wanted to give you these results first. It's definitely the fastest card we've ever tested for gaming. Um, and I'm very interested to, interested to see if in the first quarter of next year we see a GV100 based consumer Titan card or, you know, next generation, do they have a GV102 lined up? Or are we going to go to the Ampere branded parts that are rumored to be uh, out there? It would make kind of, it would make a lot of sense, right? A GPU with this much double precision horsepower is not going to yield well. It's going to be very expensive to make. Uh, if they could reduce some of that cost, obviously that's what they want to do if they're going to try to sell to a mass market. Um, that's it for now, guys. Follow up. Again, we had our we had our unboxing teardown in the previous video. In our next video, we're going to look at compute performance, so stuff like Specview Perf. We'll look at folding at home performance. We'll look at mining performance, of course. It's always on everybody's mind. Double precision, uh, double precision compute applications. We have some workloads to work through as well. So we'll see how much better this fares compared to Vega and Pascal when it comes to those workloads that it really is coming out targeted at. Check out the full review. It is on PCPro.com, part one for gaming, part two for compute, coming uh, in a day or two at most, I promise. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys.